channel and here we go this is a video that i have wanted to do more than any other video this entire year and i finally have the vehicles in stock at the same time to do it so we are going to compare the top of the line kia telluride night sky edition with the top of the line kia carnival sx and we're going to look at luxury we're going to look at technology we're going to look at all kinds of features and i'm super excited about this because if we were toyota there's a whole lot of politics involved. If Toyota came up with a Telluride, it would be a Lexus, not a Toyota. Can't call it a Toyota because that's bad, right? For whatever reason. And then what happens is, for instance, the Toyota Corolla never comes out with features that didn't first appear on the, uh, like the Lexus whatever. Here, and this is what I love about Kia, there's no politics involved. If you have a brand new car coming out, your job is to make it the absolute best vehicle you can make it. And that's why the new Kia Rio has a couple features that the Telluride doesn't have. And now we're looking at the Carnival, which has features the Telluride doesn't have. So the Telluride is already the reigning uh, Canadian uh, largest SUV of the year. It won it two years in a row. Every category that the Telluride enters in, it wins pretty much. I mean, it's won almost every SUV award you can win out there since it's come out. And now we've got the Carnival and spoiler alert, there's a lot of areas the Carnival is even better than the Telluride. So we're going to take a look at how this all works. We're going to take a look at both these cars. We go in depth here on this channel. So I'm excited to do that. We're going to spend about 30 minutes here. We will go longer if you have comments and questions that are uh, relevant to the vehicles. And uh, if, you know, if we go off topic, sometimes we stay on for a little bit as well. So for the next 30 minutes, grab yourself a snack, grab yourself a beverage. You're going to need it because you're going to be stuck with me for a while. And if you're watching and you're not live with us, skip ahead to the three minute mark. That's where we'll get going on the content. In the meantime, we're going to let our live audience build and we're going to show you how to join us if you want. All right. Bad news for one of our commenters. If you have a name that references Holocaust, you get banned. So um, just a little uh, thing to throw out there. All right. Here's how you join our channel. Uh, if you look at our channel and you go there and you refresh the channel exactly at two o'clock Eastern time, which is we're just a minute late now, 201, you will see our live video right here. We're going to click on that. We're going to probably watch an ad for something else. And I want to throw out something. If you're in the market to buy these vehicles or a Hyundai vehicle, get in touch with me. As soon as this video is going to be done and you're in Ontario, as soon as this video is done, I'll put a link in the description. You can contact me. I will set you up with our team, which we can help you anywhere in Ontario. And trust me, it's worth it. They will take care of you. There are people that I work with every day. All right, we've uh, watched the ad. We can't, for whatever reason, watch the video here. So we'll worry about that later. You guys are still on and that's good. And what is starting price of both cars? No problem. We'll show you both of that. And we're just going to get rid of one person over here. And hold on. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. If you are on our channel, we have uh, some standards here and you have to make sure. All right. There we go. Okay, so we're already at the three minute mark. No news, no notes. Here we go. Let's dig right into these vehicles. First of all, like I mentioned off the top, the Telluride is a vehicle that is absolutely top of the line, not just in the Kia lineup, but in the segment. This vehicle has continued to win awards. Uh, it continues to win awards right here this year, uh, even though it's now one year old. It's a 2020 model when it came out. It's a 2021 in front of us. This is the Night Sky Edition. Uh, in the States, you would call it a Nightfall Edition. Can't call that in Canada because there's a, sounds like a name copyright infringement thing. So that's what's going on there. And let me just get my thing back here. There we go. Uh, so we've got, uh, we're going to go through this vehicle. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at some of the technology and some of the um, luxurious features in this top of the line model, which again, has all the features. And then we're going to jump over to the Carnival and compare to that car. And like I said, spoiler alert, that car's got some amazing things. And let's just throw it out there. This is the one with the lazy boy type seats in the back. They call it the VIP lounge seating. Uh, it is an incredible rear seat in that car. And frankly, it's better than this one. But if you want all wheel drive, this is gonna be your option. So we're gonna talk about all these things and more. Let's jump right into the cars. Just bear with me for one second. I click one thing on my computer. There we go. All right, let's jump in here. Now, first of all, I just wanna show you one thing on the front. This night sky edition does have the black wheels it does have a little bit darker grill. It has the Telluride across the front in that darker kind of blacked out look. And it has the current Kia logo, but a little bit more blacked out. Now, if you come over here, you still have, even though this isn't a night sky edition, somebody asked me, is this gonna come with a night sky edition? Well, you still have black wheels. You have, instead of the 
Um, old logo blacked out, you have the new logo kind of prominent on there, so you still have a pretty modern, pretty impressive look here. We'll take a look at lights as we get going to the front, uh, but those are some things that uh, people ask me. People said to me, is the Carnival gonna come out with a Night Sky Edition? Yes, there is still a lot of uh, bright trim on this car, but these wheels, so you have some similarities there. It looks a little blue in the camera, that's a gravity gray. This one is the black, not the, um, Oh, the copper black, I can't remember the name of that exactly, but we'll dig in this one right now. Let's jump in the driver's seat right now. Again, darker chrome along the edge as well on this car. So when you hop in the Telluride, you have the best seat we have in all of Kia, and that means you have this function right here. So you're, actually, I shouldn't say the best seat because you'll see one difference here. Lumbar on this is two-way only. Sometimes we have a four-way lumbar support. Uh, for instance, in our Sorento, we have that. Standard power seat, and then you have this piece right here, which you can see is this piece right here. It is almost all the way out already, so we can bring it all the way back in. When you are a taller driver, on camera, it doesn't look like it moves much, but when you're a taller driver, you can really feel that lengthening underneath your legs. It makes you feel pretty comfortable. And of course, these seats are heated and ventilated. So a nice feature when you turn on this car in the hot or the cold, you can set it up so the ventilated seats come on when they need to automatically. And in the cold, the heated seats and the heated steering wheel can turn on by itself. In here, you have a very natural looking wood trim and more importantly, natural feeling. It's got a little bit of a texture to it. So it feels pretty cool here. Uh, this is normally, so real quick disclaimer, this vehicle came in covered in plastic. You can see there on the visor, there are still a lot of pieces of plastic. And I wanna show you one example right here. It's got some plastic on here, which I could try to rip off. Yes, we'll do that. So just a real quick disclaimer, uh, there is still a lot of plastic in this car. Don't let the cheapness of some things fool you. Uh, this is just shipping plastic that they put on here and I did not grab all of it. So this is really bothering me, but I can't get it all anyways. We'll get it all later. Anyways, point being, sometimes you're gonna see some things in there. So coming on, I'm gonna hit the start button there. Oops, we're not gonna start it up yet. Just turn it to the on position. I have my foot on the brake. In the Telluride, some people are surprised to see that we don't have the full display screen here. You will have that in the Carnival. Ignore the fuel efficiency. I went through the car wash and I was idling quite a bit there. So fuel efficiency is nowhere near that bad. And, uh, but that is something to uh, show you. You have this nice screen here, which shows you all kinds of options here. The one benefit you're gonna have on this car, especially is if I go over to here and I come down to here, you're gonna see this little bar graph. That little bar graph will uh, light up, those little bars will light up with um, power to your wheels. This is an all-wheel drive vehicle. It is a big advantage if you want to go all-wheel drive. Um, the only way you can get it is in, with an eight-passenger vehicle or seven-passenger vehicle, I guess. Well, this is seven now, but it, in the vehicle this size, basically in this competition between these two cars, all-wheel drive is only available in Telluride. You guys know that. And the thing you have here is one thing you will not find on the Carnival. Smart, sport, eco, and comfort are your drive modes. That's pretty standard stuff. The terrain modes with all-wheel drive of snow, mud, and sand. If you are going off-road, uh, this is the car to have. Now, I will say, people keep asking me, you know, I really wish the Carnival had all-wheel drive, and I get that. Um, it doesn't. So there's a hundred reasons why. It doesn't really matter what my opinion of some of them are. The bigger point is it doesn't have all-wheel drive. Now, people continue to ask me, how is it in the snow? I haven't driven it in the snow. So here's what I'll tell you from what I know about vehicles. One of the keys to being comfortable in snow is having a little bit of ground clearance. The Carnival has more ground clearance than any other minivan out there, stock minivan. Uh, so you have the ground clearance, throw winter tires on it, and then keep in mind a lot of these modern technologies that have t wheel speed sensors, traction control, stability control, ABS brakes, all those kinds of things that keep you in line. You've got the most modern versions of the in both these cars. So all wheel drive in the Telluride, uh, snow tires with the, um, with the Carnival, I think is gonna be an excellent option for people, for most people. Now, I understand if you live where my in-laws live on a country road that they plow it once a snowstorm, uh, you're probably gonna want all-wheel drive. But for a lot of us, if you live here in Brantford, all-wheel drive is a luxury, not a necessity for most of us. And you may decide, hey, I want one over the other. I always thought that I wanted all-wheel drive, but I can tell you right now, I would take that van home, no problem. Coming in here, let's just take a look here. A couple little things you like. I do have to start the car for a quick second and show you one little thing. Start the car up, signal to my left, there's my blind spot. Signal to my right, there's my blind spot. So pretty nice to have that. I gotta turn the car off again because I can't run vehicles in here. Uh, at least the door is shut and it's really hot outside. So you have this display screen that can show you your blind spots. We're gonna show you in the Carnival how it's different because the entire display screen is here and it'll use this, do the same thing in a different way. Now, over here, again, brand new vehicle, haven't even put fuel in it yet. 
you have this really nice 10 and a quarter inch display screen. This has been our class leading display screen for a while. As of today, it's no longer our class leading display screen. This 10 and a quarter inch screen, which is massive, is smaller than the 12.3 inch screen that's in the Carnival. So you have a bigger screen on the Kia Carnival. Now, I will say software is almost identical. Uh, this one needs an update, actually. We update that uh, before you go. But you have all the same functions here. You'll see the Carnival is more of a purple look. Um, you've got all kinds of things. Let's see if we can get the HD radio data to work. I like showing the Doppler radar because you can see, there you go, there's no rain at all. Actually, there is some rain in, in the area. It's a little bit of rain in the area around here. So a uh, little spots there. So this is a Doppler radar and you can see it actually does work because there's some rain in the area. Uh, no rain here where we are right now, but kind of a nice feature to have. Again, a lot of our cars have this. Both of these vehicles have this. There's lots of things in here. One thing that we do see in here is a passenger talk and a quiet mode. I want to show you both of those really just passenger talk. Passenger talk right now, if I tap it, well, I don't know if you can hear the difference in my audio system, but right now I'm hearing my speakers in the rear echoing my voice. And that is because if we look up from here, right there, this is the speaker that you have. I don't know if you can hear that. Oops. That's the speaker for your cell phone, for instance. Uh, but it does pick up my voice and it throws it to the back seat and the back seat then can hear me. Uh, so there we go. Um, so it's pretty cool because in a, in a seven passenger or eight passenger car, a third row vehicle, uh, when I'm speaking forward, people can't hear you. So you can speak in a normal voice. People in the third row can hear you, even if they have their earbuds in. Now, why would they have their earbuds in? Let me show you. Go over here and we'll go back to passenger, or sorry, not passenger talk. Go over to quiet mode. And you can reconfigure these. I like to put these side by side. Quiet mode does exactly what this says here. When quiet mode selected, the radio or the media is played only in the front seats and all volume levels above seven will be decreased to seven. So basically, uh, the volume goes up to level seven and that's it and it kills the rear speakers. So you can let the rear passengers listen to their music on their headphones and you can listen to your music up here. Now, if you want your music a little louder, you can still turn it up and it'll leave the rear speakers off. Both these cars have this, but I want you to remember passenger talk because we're gonna show you a big difference in the carnival when we get there. Coming down here, this is set to Fahrenheit because it's made in the USA and um, they set them for Fahrenheit here. So um, you have a rear climate control system here as well. When I hit that rear climate control, it shows up on the screen here. We hit auto and uh, there we go. We've got a tri-zone system. You're gonna have a very similar system in the carnival. So tri-zone system, and the only difference is the Carnival, when you set this to auto right now, it's gonna blow the fan whatever speed it, de it deems necessary. In the Carnival, you're gonna have three levels of auto, so it can keep the fan speed down. It'll take you a little longer to reach temperature, but it can keep it a little quieter, or it can change that real blast of temperature. So we're gonna turn that off for now. Uh, ventilated and heated seats, heated right there, ventilated right there. You can turn them all off. Eight speed automatic transmission on both these vehicles. Within one horsepower uh, is the same, the, the horsepower, is within one horsepower of each other on both these cars. This one has a 3.8 liter engine, can tow 5,000 pounds. That one has a 3.5 liter engine that can tow 3,500 pounds. So towing capacity, all wheel drive, you gotta go tell your ride. It's just the way it is. Uh, on the mirror here, you've got a uh, little garage door opening buttons there, and you have your UVO intelligence buttons up here on the dash. These are nice LED lights. See those, those are for the sunroof. One says front, one says rear. Here's the thing, the rear one, let me just see if I can show you. See that rear sunroof? It just has the powered panel. That rear panel does not open. Spoiler alert, it will open on the Carnival. So it's a pretty cool uh, feature. So just so you know, if you're buying a tight ride in the middle of winter and you think you have a rear sunroof, you do, but it doesn't open. Carnival opens again. Carnival bigger screen, Carnival opening sunroof. Uh, the other thing you've got on the steering wheel here, let's, oops, that's not what you wanna see. On the steering wheel here, you have the smart cruise control, you have lane keeping assist, you do not have the same lane follow assist button on the steering wheel. So highway drive assist, um, smart cruise control, a lot of features there. Again, this is the class leading vehicle right now. So we are in the best of the best, and not just the best of the best in Kia lineup, the best of the best in these large SUV, uh, you know, large SUV wars, large SUV comparisons. All right, let's jump out of here. There's a thousand more things we can show you. Harman Kardon sound system in this one, Bose audio in the Carnival. Let's jump in the Carnival and let's be wowed. Let's be impressed. Okay, keep in mind, the Telluride is the current reigning large SUV of the year in Canada. And now we go over here. So we lose the ability to have 
the front extend out. I think that's a mistake by Kia. I think it should be in this trim level. We gain the ability to have four-way lumbar. I think it's a mistake they left it on the Telluride. I feel like it should have that. So there you go. There's my honest view. Uh, you got memory seats in both vehicles here. I don't know if I showed you that in the other one. A little bit different. Not a wood trim here, but a kind of a nice patterned um, aluminum look that runs right across the dash the same way the wood does in the um, Telluride. Now, hit the start button right here. Wham. Look at that. So these are actually, oh, low fuel in this car as well. Actually, very low fuel. Let's turn the climate system off here as well. Both of these vehicles, um, so when you look at it here, you can see at this angle here, when I look through the steering wheel, those are separate screens. The visual impression you get when I'm driving, and again, when I'm looking with two eyes, this kind of blends together differently than with the camera, which only has one eye. Um, the visual impression you get is nothing but crystal clear display screens all the way across here. So let's just go over here. Let's just pull up the map for a second. That's easier. See if it'll show daylight. No, it, this one thinks it's darker in this side of the room. So it's not showing the daylight, but this is the same basic software. Again, this one's purple. So it has the update, uh, the new one, the Telluride can be updated to this right now. Uh, but this is a larger screen again. And again, I can't stress to you how much larger it is. Now, we started up the Telluride for a quick second to show you the signal light. In here, we showed our blind spot on the, um, on the Telluride. Now, I want you to watch here and here. So, we'll do this again. Again, we can't run the vehicle for long, so let's just take a look. Signal left, my speedometer disappears. That's my blind spot right now. Signal right, my speedometer disappears, and that's my blind spot there. And in the meantime, I continue to keep all of the information that I want in the center in the center. So that's my lane keep information there. We can change it here. Let me just turn the wheel a little bit. Uh, change it to all kinds of things in here. Uh, so if you just want your speedometer, for instance, down there, you can do that. Uh, lots of features here. Now the Telluride does have a heads up display. This car does not have a heads up display. Uh, moving over to some of the climate system. Remember I said the climate system is essentially the same on both cars. I don't have the rear air on right now, but I could turn that on the exact same way. This is that three button automatic climate. So it's gonna blow the air fairly loud. You can hear it. Now what we're gonna do, just turn the volume down on that a little bit and uh, we'll bring it down. So it's still blowing fairly firm, but it's not blowing anywhere near max volume. And it will try to reach 22 degrees and then bring it back down. You can set it to Fahrenheit or Celsius the way you want. Both cars have wireless charging for phones. This one is an updated version with a ventilated wireless charger. Both cars have that eight speed automatic transmission. We talked about that. Both cars have heated and ventilated seats. There's my heated, there's my ventilated, and we'll turn them off as that. Well, a little bit hard to see on camera, very easy to see. He's steering wheel. Now, rear view camera. I wanna show you the rear view camera. Both cars have parking sensors front and rear, but I hope I'm not making a mistake here. This is the rear view camera. Uh, you can see both cars have a 360 camera. This is massive. I don't know if I can show you, like this big backup camera is bigger than you would have in any you know, typical uh, small car, regular car right now. And then you also got this big display here, which you can zoom in and out of uh, a little bit to show you your van. It also shows you where the wheels will go. So as I turn there, both the Telluride and the Carnival have this on the top trim level. The difference with this one is you can view, when I go to drive, let's see if it'll show. Yeah, when I go to drive, this shows in front of the car. Now, you can see in front of the car, there's a grate. I can't possibly see that grate, but I can see it here. On the Carnival, and I don't know if the Telluride does this because I haven't noticed it before, those parking beepers, the little sensors on the front of the car, when they sense that you're close to something and they start beeping, they will turn on the forward view camera automatically. In other words, when you're coming up to a kid's toy or a curb or a wall, you will automatically have this camera for parking. So when you're backing up, of course it's already on when you're backing up, but when you're in drive, you will also have it automatically come on on this car. And I don't remember the Telluride doing that. So kind of a nice feature here. Uh, coming over to here, we're gonna put it back in park for a second. Over here, we still have that smart cruise control. We can combine it in a different way here and we add that lane follow assist. If you don't know what lane follow assist is, we'll talk about that a little later in the video. LED headlights on both these vehicles. You now have a star button here, which you can customize to whatever you want. In addition to the, um, a lot of time you have a star button over on these main screens as well, which you can customize. So now I wanna show you a couple little features. Remember we talked about that quiet mode and the passenger talk? Well, passenger talk is also in this car quiet mode, but you also have passenger view. Now, remember most minivans, and again, we're not supposed to call this a minivan, but it's a minivan. That's why we're calling it a minivan. Um, most minivans, uh, what you end up with is a little camera, a little mirror, that wide angle mirror that flips out here, and that's how you're supposed to see your kids. This one, 
I have got a camera. And if these chairs were moved in different positions, you would see the third row seats as well. We haven't really hit the spoiler alert yet, but we'll get to them in a second as we go to the rear seats in just a second here. Uh, oops, that's not the camera view I wanted. This is the camera view I wanted. There is that seat, which we're gonna take a better look at there. That is a legal seat to sit in. It is just like a lazy boy. It's called the VIP. So instead of just the passenger talk, which I can still do, which if you look over here, I can still talk to, oops, talk now. I can still do by I'm talking to the rear speakers right now. Instead of just that, I can also see them, but I can also zoom in and see them a little closer. So when Johnny's not paying attention and I want to go over and chat with just him, I can see you making faces at me. Uh, so that's kind of a cool feature. And again, the size of this screen can't be understated. It is bigger than the tie rides. It is excellent. So there's front seat stuff. Where are we headed next? We're going to go rear seat. We're going to talk about that opening sunroof because let's just open that right now. There is the full opening sunroof and I don't think you're getting the sense of the size. So let's just do it this way for a second. Spin around. We'll take a look. That is a massive sunroof back there and it does open, which is a big change from um, the Telluride, which has only the opening sunroof right here, which we will also open here. So again, nice feature there. Telluride has um, one opening roof. The um, Carnival at this trim has two opening roofs, which is pretty cool. Uh, we talked about the mirror in the other car. You had the, um, the buttons that were on the front here. Now you have a, not quite a frameless mirror, but a much smaller frame. And you have the buttons down here, which do the same thing for garage door opener. And you have your Uvo intelligence buttons right over here. Whoops, come on camera. There and there. There's no more navigation button on modern Uvo intelligence. And that's because you have a GPS already with your um, car here. And you have that with your Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Uh, so where are we headed next? I'm gonna go take your questions now. Then we're gonna go middle row, back row, talk about some of those luxury features. Uh, spoiler alert, middle rows in both these vehicles, heated and ventilated. Carnival's gonna win uh, as far as the comfort. And then we'll talk about all the other questions that you may have. So if you have a question, now's a good time to ask. And we'll jump over to the question section right now. And we will go from there. All right. Curious to know which ones you guys prefer, Carnival, Telluride. Feel free to write Carnival or Telluride, especially if you're a first timer with us. Just choose Carnival, Carnival or Telluride. Tell me which one's your favorite, and we'll go from there. And if you're not watching live with us, tell me which one's your favorite and why, uh, when you can write a little longer. Peter, are the engines made in the US? Ah, uh, that's a good question. Off the top of my head, I'm not 100% sure. I feel like they are, but I don't know for sure. So that's a great question. Um, I did not research that. I didn't look that up. So I'll, I'll find out for you, but I don't know off the top. So we got some carnival preferences here. Okay. What about a hybrid? Will they be coming out soon with either one? So that's a good question. When the Telluride was first introduced as a concept car, it had what they call the suicide doors, the, you know, rear hinged rear door, excuse me, rear hinged rear door. Um, and that one was to touted as a 400 horsepower, multi power train, you know, electric or whatever. Uh, the reality is, we cannot stop, we cannot keep Carnival or Tellurides in stock. And I think that's gonna prevent us from changing any kind of platform. So can the platform handle it? I'm not sure. Uh, until we can keep up with demand, I don't think they'll, they'll introduce a new model that we won't be able to you know, meet demand with. So they are making and selling every one of these, selling every one of these that they can. Um, but neither one of these, to my knowledge, is planned as a hybrid or anything else, uh, we could find out as time goes on. But right now, they are what you see. So good question. Uh, at this point, my answer is no, they will not. That could change, I suppose, but I don't know. Okay, uh, looks like a barber's chair. Yeah, we'll talk about that chair in a second. Uh, is there a built-in dash cam in any? There's not a built-in dash cam in any. Um, they don't do that yet, although there are cameras all around both these vehicles. I know on the Uvo Intelligence, for instance, uh, on I think on both of these cars now, you can actually take pictures out of those cameras out of the mirrors, camera out of the front, camera out of the rear. Um, you can take a bunch of pictures around uh, the vehicle. So on your cell phone app, which is the Uvo Intelligence app, but you can't do them while you're driving. So it seems to be a more popular question I'm getting, and I'm wondering if that'll be something that they do one day. Um, it's not happening yet. Somebody says, ooh, EV6 like Dash in the Carnival. Absolutely. Somebody says the Carnival is amazing. It really is. And this is kind of my point. The Telluride, like I said, we're selling every single one we could possibly get. Um, it is recognized in the automotive industry everywhere as a leader, if not the very best in its class. And here I am showing you better sunroofs. Um, we're going to show you in the back seat some more things. Better screens, a little more technology. LED lights on both. Like you're getting a lot. 
um, in that carnival. It's really a class leader as well. All right, feel free to keep asking questions, guys. Let's, I'm gonna jump right in here because I wanna show you the seats and we only got five minutes left before my half an hour time commitment to you guys. And beyond that, I'll stay on with you, of course, if you have questions. So here we go. This is a model. Now you can get a Telluride with a bench seat here in the middle row. This one happens to be not a bench seat. Now if that armrest looks kind of funny, when I recline this seat, it will recline and then that will be a more of a level seat. Now, if I ever recline the Telluride or the Carnival seat, the power recline, the armrest, you'll see it kind of nudging up, nudging up, nudging up, nudging up. The armrest is almost like a powered design. It doesn't feel that way until you recline it. On the Telluride, not so much of a powered feature, which means when you bring the seat back to upright, this, the armrest can lean down. Now you can fix that very quickly by lifting it up. You can hear those little bit of ratchet style clicks and they're level. The Telluride, or sorry, the Carnival, you won't have to do that. When you bring the seat back upright, the armrest just levels itself out on automatically, which is a pretty cool th uh, thing to have. Comfort, space, everything in here, like I mentioned, heated and ventilated. Three levels of heating. I don't know if you can see the three little lights there, they're off, and three levels of ventilating. So that used to be the only uh, vehicle we had with those ventilated seats in, in the middle row. Now you've got the Carnival as well. Jumping in here, you can see, easy to get in and out of. Uh, good height to the vehicle, but good height in the minivan as well. Tons of headroom over that glass. It is a large panel of glass. It does not open. And the reason it doesn't open is because there's just not enough room there. You'd have to uh, either shrink it up quite a bit or not have it uh, slide, like it would slide over the back end, it would ruin the aerodynamics. Um, it just doesn't make sense. So again, large panel over opening panel, uh, but you got a pretty large panel in the other one, in the other uh, vehicle as well. This one has the climate controls in the middle here. I like this better on the Telluride than on the Carnival because both side passengers can reach that. And uh, on the Carnival, you're gonna see it's on the right side of the vehicle, so the left side passenger couldn't reach it. Now, taking a quick look at some things here, USB ports in the back of each seat. You're gonna see that in the Carnival as well. Little hook there. You've got essentially a double pocket here. So main pocket here fits your cell phone right here if you wanna do that. And you have, uh, like I said, that USB port there. All this is shipping plastic. So this is actually piano black trim, not the uh, white that you see. There's a USB port, or sorry, a 12 volt port, excuse me, and a regular uh, 110 volt plug right there as well. So all the features you kind of want. Harman Kardon sound system. Telluride has these little um, blinds built into the door that click up, the camera kind of compensates for how much shade they actually give you, but it is pretty good shade there. The difference on the Telluride is they only have them in this row here. You're gonna notice in the Carnival, the same shades are in the back row there. Let's go take a look at the Carnival. Oh, I should point out the vents here as well. I don't know if I showed that, vents, the seats. So again, executive class seats here, very comfortable. They're just like front seats. Now, you know what's not like front seats? Let me show you what's not like front seats. Cool little lighting here on the Carnival. One thing that is not like the front seats are these right here. In the previous video, I don't think I extended them out fully, but this footrest, again, slides down and out. This is a Lazy Boy chair. Some people say it looks like a dentist chair. And I don't know about you, I don't like the dentist, but they've got great chairs. And that's kind of what this is like. And of course, it's a little difficult to get into like this, but I want, didn't want to waste time in the video reclining it like that. So you can see you've got sort of the regular upright chair, um, arguably a little bit more comfortable than the Telluride, but you know, that depends on who you are and what size body you are. And you can see here, when you're tilted back, the armrests are tilted back. When you're level, those armrests are level. You don't have to do that. Again, moving that seat, that powered seat there gives you some space. Now, let's jump into the seat for a second here. There's no really good way to show this on video. Um, I will tell you, I am as comfortable as I have ever been at work. I'm basically laying down here. This is not a flattering view. I get that. But check this out, guys. This is me chilling out as if I'm in a lazy boy. It is crazy comfortable. The VIP lounge seats, they support to the end of my knee. That, that footrest comes out and stretches down to give me the support right to the end of my feet. I honestly thought that these seats would be comfortable for maybe a five foot five person. I'm six feet tall. This is crazy. Price on both, we'll get to that in a couple minutes here, um, but this is nuts. Do the armrests go completely up and out of the way when entering? Yes, they do. So let's just show you here as well. I'm not moving from this seat ever, guys. You wanna flip the armrests up, they just flip up like that. These seats here, they do move in and out. You have to have them in the inside position to recline them like this. Uh, so that is something to keep in mind. Um, they don't recline on the outside position. The other 
negative with this is if you want to go full recline mode like this, you're basically eliminating your rear seats because by the time those rear seats pop up and move forward, there is no room for them. You cannot do this in the middle row seats if you're gonna have passengers in the third row. Now you still have an excessive amount of cargo space, uh, but something to keep in mind, if you do have third row passengers, you're gonna be very comfortable in these seats, but you're not going to be able to recline them to this level. So a couple other things I'll show you here. There's the climate control system here in this car. Again, same basic functions there, but it is on the right side. Same basic vents here. You have LED lighting in there. They can open their own rear sunroof here. So if you've got kids, I haven't tried locking out the rear windows to see if that locks out the rear sunroof. But again, I've got uh, my hand out the roof here, which is pretty cool. Um, you can't do that in the Telluride. But again, I would say the windows, they feel the same size to me from there all the way back to here. Uh, if there's a difference in size, it's not much of a difference between the Telluride rear window and this. You just get to experience more of it here. So pretty awesome seats pretty awesome luxury same idea on the back seats here you've got the 100 or the regular plug 115 volt it says there you've got a 12 volt plug you've got usbs in the back of the seats you have a double uh this one has a larger net pocket and then inside there as well i'll try to show you let me just go over to the switch seats here all right let me just jump in here so you have a regular pocket here and then you have the netting pocket which is a little bit bigger over here netting pockets work great because you can throw like an ipad in there throw the cable outside out the top or if you want to put it sideways you can throw it out the side to plug it into the usb over there and again while i'm reclining in my super comfortable seat heated and ventilated seats now there is a problem there is one little issue with this car when i'm reclined so i'm way back here in this seat now i can move the seat forward from where i am but when i'm reclined in my seat over there the um heated seats and ventilated seats in this area are way over there. Now I can reach them here, even though my seat's way back, but if I recline this seat, I can't reach it. So if I turn on my heated seats and fall asleep, I might get a little warm. So you have to get somebody to turn on the ventilated seats for you, but you know who can do that? The front seat, the driver over there. They can turn on the ventilated heated seats right from there. So there we go. All right, so we got 60 people on. We got to 40 likes today. I was hoping to get to 60 likes today. So if all you 60 people hit the like button right now, that would help me out. That would send us past that 60 like mark. Uh, I'm going back to answer your questions now. So if you have a question, now's a great time to ask again. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, we kind of passed a big uh, uh, barrier. We hit 20,000 subscribers over the long weekend for us. Uh, so that really kind of was nice of you to do that for us. But if you haven't subscribed, we do this every day. We do in-depth uh, Kia and Hyundai vehicle reviews. We'll do tips and trips. We're we did a bunch of Kia classes in the past where we taught you how to use your Kia. Some of the confusing stuff. Somebody said to me that some of the manuals aren't written great for understanding. Uh, do me a favor, hit subscribe button because we got some Hyundai Kia classes coming up again in the future. Uh, we'll teach you how to do stuff pretty easy. And those will be way shorter and easier to watch. You know, five minutes or less is what we try to do on those. All right, is there someone to give you a beverage in those nice back seats of the carnival? Yes, that's what siblings are for, and you have to bribe them to do that. All right, price on both, that's a very fair question. I don't think we touched on that yet, so let's just jump into that. Price on both vehicles. Uh, oh, that's not the view we want. Okay, there we go. SX Limited Night Sky. It's a top-of-the-line Telluride. So the price on the Telluride, this is the kicker. $55,695. Now, this is MSRP. Uh, we here at Brantford Kia do not sell above MSRP. I know that happens in other markets. It does not happen here. So MSRP, there's still freight and air tax or some other fees on those. But MSRP plus freight. Uh, Carnival, the comparative number on the SX, 48295 And that's the kicker. I don't need all-wheel drive as much as I need my kids to just give me a break on the road trip. Those lounge seats... That's gonna work for me. Um, so again, all wheel drive, it's got a different look. It's got a different feel. This one, nobody's gonna call it a minivan. That one, everyone's gonna call it a minivan, except for Kia Canada, they decided it's not a minivan, but it is. Um, but you're getting a lot in there and you're saving a significant amount of money over here. So that is a real intriguing thing for me. Um, the Carnival, again, am I a minivan person? Nobody's a minivan person. Nobody's like mm, minivans but they are some of the most practical vehicles out there. They have way more cargo space in this car. We did a comparison of Telluride and Carnival in the past, uh, about a week or so ago, where we looked at the practicalities of each, the rear seats, the trunk space, those kinds of things. Uh, but now we're getting into luxury, fe luxury features. Arguably, you're getting more luxury features in the Carnival than you are in the Telluride. There's not much that you're missing in the Carnival from the Telluride, and you're saving significant money. 48295 not a cheap minivan
but compare that to anything from Honda, anything from Toyota, go feature for feature and tell me we're not the best deal out there. And then again, compare it within our lineup here. There's a Telluride, 55, 695, equal number on the Carnival, 48, 295. So really impressive price point. Um, it just depends on what you want. So we're gonna go back, take your questions now. Still searching for 10 more likes, hoping to get to 60 likes today. Do me a favor, we can get there and uh, we'll do that. Let me just uh, go back to the comment section here. All right. Call it a mama you yeah. Is the Carnival rear wheel drive? No, it is front wheel drive. So most minivans are, are front wheel drive now and that allows you for some extra space. Somebody uh, disagreed with me and that's fine. You're allowed to disagree with me. But I said that all wheel drive, not like Toyota does it. Toyota does it electrified. Um, all wheel drive would run a drive shaft down here and I argued that that would take some cargo space and they argued no it wouldn't and I said yes it would because the Carnival has some of the largest rear trunk space there. Anything you put back there would take away some space. So that's why there's no drivetrain to the rear on these cars. They just give you a little bit more space. The Carnival is class leading in the minivan segment for space and of course that should tell you where it sits uh, compared to the Telluride. A lot of people feel that the Carnival has very much of a suburban Ford Expedition kind of look. Um, so that's kind of the extra length, uh, um, you know, suburban style, Yukon style things from GM. A lot of people think that, that the back end really has that look to it. A lot of people feel like the Telluride has sort of a Land Rover-ish kind of feel. That's really the size of this, is it sort of Land Rover, Range Rover-ish kind of feel. Um, and this certainly is in that Yukon size space, but of course that is a lot different. Which of the two is wider? So normally I don't go into specs on these. I would argue they're both probably similar. Um, I'll see if I can find that really quickly. I don't, it doesn't make for a great video for me to search for specs. Um, you know what, I'm gonna leave that for later. It is on the Kia Canada website. So if you go to the website I'm on and you just hit the specs button, you can find that on both. Uh, that's probably better for you to do there than for me to spend time on the video. But um, I think they're similarly wide. The Carnival is wider than the old Sedona was. So that's something to keep up there. Are they both unibody? Yes, they are. Uh, a lot of people think that's a negative for off-roading. I think the reality is, unless you're getting a Jeep Wrangler, you're not going so far off-road that this vehicle can't get there. And if you are, then you're not looking at this vehicle anyways. If you're going to cottage roads, gravel roads, fire roads, uh, old logging roads, those kind of things, this is going to get you everywhere you need to go. Sand, mud, snow mode. This car is not going to go down some of those logging roads, um, old fire roads, that kind of thing the same way, because it is front wheel drive. But how many people do that? Miles per tank on both. Well, let's just, instead of going miles per tank, uh, it's a 71 liter tank in, I believe, in the car, in the um, uh, Telluride. Let's go look at uh, fuel efficiency. So 12.6 liters and 9.7 on the Telluride. Flipping over here, 12 and 8.9. So better fuel efficiency on the larger but front wheel drive um, uh, Carnival. So again, better fuel efficiency, lower price, arguably better comfort and technology features, but no all-wheel drive. Does a Carnival tow the same? No, this is rated to tow 5,000 pounds. And to be fair, in this top trim level, you also have auto leveling rear suspension. Now it's not the air ride suspension that levels it out. Uh, it changes the oil and the shock. So you'll load your trailer on, for instance, it'll squat a little bit. You'll drive around a little bit and as you go down the bumps, it'll just level itself out and it'll be leveled very, very quickly, like a kilometer or less. So 5,000 pound towing capacity here with the auto leveling rear suspension, 3,500 pound towing capacity with the Carnival. And again, not that auto leveling rear suspension, but again, not the end of the world. Um, you know, that kind of thing. Ground clearance doesn't look like a whole lot here. I'll admit it. It's actually pretty impressive. I, I should probably have brought a tape measure. You're going to have more on the Telluride, but not a ton more uh, because like I said, the Carnival is intentionally higher up off the ground than other minivans to give you that extra ground clearance. So jumping through here, let's just see if there's any other questions here. Uh, I think that's it. So there we go. There is your full comparison. We did not make, oh, there we go. Google says 78.5 for Carnival and 78.3 for Telluride. I will assume that's the width. 78, wait, wait, that would be, yeah, that would be width. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, tell me what that was, the last person that wrote that, uh, Taj Woods. If you could just tell me what that Google says, what are you talking about? Is that, what, what is that measurement? Uh, what is the bear's name? Oh, the bear. Yeah, the bear over there is um, teddy bear. Inches, yeah, I know it's inches, but what is that for, is that width that we're talking about? Uh, oh, sorry, Ty, not Taj, Ty Woods. 
Width, width and inches, there we go. Okay, so width and inches, they're within less than an inch difference between the two. So basically the exact same width, practically speaking. If you can fit one width-wise in the parking spot, you can fit the other. Now again, mirrors fold in on both. So being wider vehicles, um, you can fold those mirrors in uh, electrically and you'll have more room in the garage, that kind of thing. It's pretty nice. Uh, again, in a tighter garage, the sliding doors of a minivan are gonna be easier to get out of than the, um, this here. Did you mention wireless Apple CarPlay on the 2022 Telluride? I did not because I haven't had that confirmed on the 2021 Telluride, which is right in front of me. 2022, I will dig into those specs when, it, when it's announced. Uh, lower trim levels, Carnivals, they have wireless Android or Apple CarPlay. The higher trim of the bigger screen does not have it yet. Now, there are Kia products where, for instance, the K5, the lower trim level on the 8-inch screen, does have wireless Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. The higher trim level in the 10 and quarter screen does not have wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Uh, but they did tell us on the K5, a software update will enable it in the future. My assumption is that will happen here, but nobody has confirmed that. I don't know when it's gonna happen. It could be a long time from now. So there we go. All right, somebody says you missed a great presentation, Carter. Yeah, you did. I think we did a great job today. I love these cards. We did not hit 60 likes, so only 53 people said I did a great job so far while we were live, that's okay. Uh, we will be back. Somebody says something about the EV6. We will have that in here when it arrives. We'll talk about a lot of that stuff. I want to thank everyone for watching. I want to thank all 20,000 plus subscribers. We've got to a new milestone on the weekend, which is pretty cool. And uh, tomorrow we're going to take a look at more vehicles. So every day, 2 o'clock, we do this, and we'll do a lot more shorter videos as well. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Do me a favor, hit that like button. Actually, we only got two likes away from 60, so maybe by the time I hang up, we'll be good. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Have a great day. We'll talk to you 